guys, it's Vicki Sokol Evans, and I'm following up for my tips and tricks session. I want to show you how to style a document that is already formatted. So during my session, I showed you how to style an unformatted document where I clicked in the employee handbook and started applying styles, but that's not real life. So I want to show you a real life scenario of what happens when you go back to your desk and you open up your favorite documents. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your view tab and you're going to click on the navigation pane because you want to see, investigate and see, you know, is this document already styled? Or because I hope all your documents are styled, right? In most cases, they're not going to be styled, and so you might kind of feel depressed because you're looking over here going, oh man, it's not styled. How will I get this into a styled document? Because we want the ability to globally update styles to make it more efficient when we're formatting our documents. We want to be able to navigate our documents, move content around, and also create a table of contents. So I'll, I'll show you some of that stuff in, in this session. So what I'm going to do, I have, you, there's typically going to be two scenarios when you, when you want to style an already formatted document. The first scenario is that you're not tied to the legacy format. And what I mean by legacy format is, let's say this is the employee handbook, it says effective 2012, and this has been in our office since 2012, and I, it's formatted fine, but I don't really like the format. And I want to overwrite this format and maybe um, use the format that's in the gallery or in an Office 2013, you can see the style sets, which is also included in 2007, 2010 in Word, but in a different area. Um, it, the, you, know, you might want to then use some of these really cool style sets. So that's this first scenario that, that we want to use one of these cool style sets. The second scenario, and this is a real life scenario that came in from a customer, is that they, they had an employee handbook they've been working in for months. For weeks they were trying to create a table of contents and the problem is the document was not styled. So um, I, my first question to them was, can I modify the way this looks? And the answer was no. They needed the document to stay like this. So they wanted this format, but they wanted it to be styled because they needed to create a table of contents. So I'm going to show you that example next. But first, let's do an example where you're OK with overriding the format. All right. So just like I did in class um, in during my session, you simply click in a paragraph. And if you look at the top, it says employee handbook. It's not styled. Oh, and this one says I like formatting. Let me go back to the one where it says I do not like formatting. OK. Um, they both look the same, but um, I want to make sure I'm in the right document. Employee handbook, it is not styled, and I don't like the formatting, which means I can overwrite it. And that's what I'll do here. You simply click in a paragraph like we did during my session, and then click on title, click here on subtitle, and apply a subtitle. Now let me show you how to globally apply styles. And what's great about a document that already has legacy formatting is that you can leverage the patterns, the formatting patterns in your document. As I click in this paragraph here, there's this feature over here called Select All Text with Similar Formatting, which is one of the tips on the list on your summary. So depending on if I if I showed you 2010 or 2013, it's on the list within the Word, Word um, tips. So I click in that paragraph, and then I select All Text with Similar Formatting, and what it's doing is it's going to select this paragraph and any paragraph that looks just like it. So if you applied formatting, legacy formatting prior to this, you probably have nice nice patterns in the document. So it's going to select that. Let me go to the View tab and turn on my navigation pane so you can truly see that I don't have any headings in this document. Um, you won't, you can't tell that it selected all the other other headings that match this format, but in a second you'll you'll see it. Um, when I go to the Home tab, my next step is to go ahead and apply Heading 1. As I left click on Heading 1, I want your eyes over there on the navigation pane. So keep your eyes on the left on the navigation pane. I'm going to click on Heading 1, and you'll see that because I used Select All Text with Similar Formatting, it had selected all the patterns and then applied Heading 1 to all of these paragraphs. Isn't that amazing? Um, let me show you what, happens now, what happened now. Uh, if you'll notice down here where it says Page 23, um, page 23-25, I'm now, I'm no longer on page 1, which is completely fine because this feature, the select all text with similar formatting, it doesn't matter where you are in the document. I can be on page 23 
all I need to do is find one example of a, of a paragraph that I want to change. So in this case, I want to change this next paragraph. So this is heading one, this is going to be my heading two, and then I want to select in my, this is going to be an example of heading two. Remember, this is my example of heading two. So I'm going to select all text with similar formatting, and it finds all the other paragraphs that match that format. And then I can go ahead and select Heading 2, and I want your eyes on the navigation pane. As I select Heading 2, as you can see, it fills in the navigation pane. I then find an example of Heading 3, which is right here. And by the way, you're going to know your document, document where your headings are because you know your document better than anybody else. So just take a little bit to examine kind of what your structure and hierarchy is going to be. Um, so I'm really familiar with this document. I know this is going to be a heading three because I only have three levels of headings. And I say select all text with similar formatting. It finds everything that matches that pattern. It's so beautiful, isn't it? And I apply heading three to this. And you'll see that it fills in nicely. And I'm going to do a control home. And I just want to show you, so we just applied the structure, we just applied styles, and the next step would be to go to your style set. So in 2013, you go to the design tab. In 2007 uh, and 2010, there's a button right here, a big button that says change styles. So let me go over to design tab in 2013, and I can hover over here and see the different style sets, and just kind of update my document um, to a better look and feel. And again, you know, I could still at this point move things around if I wanted to. So that's the benefit of styles. But another benefit of styles is being able to create a table of contents. So I'll go ahead and go to my references tab. I click in a blank spot where I want the table of contents. And in real life, you would section off this spot and have a blank page. And that's included in our sections and headers and footers class. Um, so you'll want to uh, check that out if you're in the Academy. We'll have that, um, depending on when you're watching this video, it's currently not in the Academy, but it's going to be, um, it's going to be uh, on the schedule this year in 2016. So then I go to References, and I go to Table of Contents here. I don't particularly use the built-in Table of Contents because I want control over how many levels of headings. These built-ins want to use all, level, all three levels of headings. So, um, or the first three levels of headings. So if you have like four or five levels, it would just bring in the top three. But I want just two levels of headings, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Custom Table of Contents. Depending on your version, it might say Insert Table of Contents. So Show Levels here, I'm going to just uh, knock it down to just two. So anything marked as Heading 1 and Heading 2 will be included in the Table of Contents. And then I click OK, and voila, I have my Table of Contents. Um, and again, you know, you can, um, let me scroll down here. Here and this doesn't have our red cape color set, so I'm going to go to the design tab. And I, if I had a red cape theme, which I don't have a red cape theme I, um, right at this moment because this is a new computer, I can go to colors and change it to the red cape colors, go to fonts, change it to red cape fonts. And then if I wanted one of these headings to be the red that we have in our uh, brand, I can go to home and let's say anything marked as heading one. So I'm going to right click on heading one, choose modify and then make it the red format. There. And so now this document, um, this 26 page document is updated. So that, that takes me from working at the paragraph level up to the style and style set level and a theme level, getting closer and closer to the top there. All right, so now um, I want to share this next example because this is a real life uh, situation that happened. I had a client that they had been working on their table of contents for quite a bit. I mean, not table of contents. They've been working on their employee handbook for months, but they were working on their table of contents for uh, several weeks, trying to create a table of contents. And the first thing I did was I looked over here in the navigation pane and noticed there were no headings. You can't create a table. You cannot create a table of contents unless you have headings in your document. So what we need to do is convert this to a head to, to uh, heading styles. Now the next question I had for my client was, can I change the look and feel of this document? And guess what their answer was? The answer was no. They needed it to stay this format because that's their legacy format. They didn't want me to change it up at all. So. Um, and that's, that could be the case with your document. So I want you to keep track of the time right now. 
keep track of the time, write it down, because I want to show you how long this could potentially take you. And, and obviously I'm kind of adding some instruction here, but um, just, just kind of take a note at the time and I'll, we'll uh, check the time at the end. So in this case, you know, in, in the previous example, what I was doing was I was clicking here and as I left click, it pushes down the format that's defined in this in the gallery. It pushed it down into the document. What I want to do instead is I want to take this format in this paragraph, whatever is defined as the format, and I want to push it up to that style in the gallery. And the way you do that is you right click. So I click an employee handbook anywhere in this paragraph. And instead of left clicking, so if I left click, it would do that. When I right click, there's this option here. It says update title to match selection. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm updating the title style to match where my cursor is. So I apply that. Okay, so it's pushed it up there. I click in subtitle and I do the same thing. I come over here to subtitle. I right click and I say update si subtitle to match my selection. We're essentially saying update, update subtitle style to match where my cursor is. And then I apply that. Now, we're going to incorporate what we just learned in the previous example. We're going to select all text with similar formatting. And we're going to kind of do the same thing. So you can't tell right now, but it did highlight all the heading ones for me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now if I left click, remember it's going to push it down to the document. Instead I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose update heading one to match my selection. So I want your eyes on the navigation pane as I choose that option. So there are my, there are my um, heading ones. I find any example of heading, notice it didn't turn it blue. It looks just like the same, like the legacy document, except we know that it's been styled. I find my next uh, example of a heading, so this is a heading two. Select all text with similar formatting. I'm going to right click on heading two, update it to match my selection. Keep your eyes on the navigation pane for me. Right there, perfect. I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know about you guys, I'm getting goosebumps. I love this. And then I find an example of heading three. I select text with all similar formatting so you can see that. Scroll down, right click on heading three, and update heading three to match my selection. Okay, and then I'm going to do control home. I click in here, go to my references tab, table of contents, custom table of contents, and this time I'm just going to want one level of headings, and then click OK. Now look, check at the time, check what time it is, and just to give you an idea of how long this could take. Now the client had been working weeks and weeks and weeks trying to create a table of contents. You'll notice that the, by changing the way you work, by using those styles, you can generate table of contents in seconds. Um, so. Uh, it took me probably less than a minute uh, to do this in real life, um, and uh, I charged them maybe two hours worth of work. I'm just kidding. I didn't charge them two hours. I charged them four, maybe five. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, what I did was I uh, reached out to the assistant, and uh, we I trained her on how to do this herself because that's my goal is to help you work less and better by using this technology. You have it all at your fingertips and we just need to kind of raise it, raise our kind of um, way of working from the old way, which was the paragraph level, to the new way, which is the style, style set, and themes level. So, um, so that's how you style a legacy document that's already formatted. I showed you two different scenarios. So reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, oh, by the way, if you're interested in mastering styles, um, in the Academy we have Styles 101. And I would also recommend the, the um, a complimentary uh, class, which is the Office Themes. I really want you, the Office Themes is the highest level global format. It's the most upstream formatting that, um, that you can do in your, in your documents and presentations and spreadsheets. So those two go hand in hand. And if it's not already in the Academy, depending on when you're listening to this video, um, I also recommend the Styles 201, which includes the um, automatic paragraph numbering, as well as character styles. Okay, that's it for me. Um, email us at support at redcapeco.com if you have any questions at all. Okay, bye guys. Hey guys, uh, one more thing. I went ahead and installed some of the themes that I had created um, for my themes class. So I want to show you how to turn this employee handbook into, um, into the, maybe the Google employee handbook, how to leverage themes throughout this. So I'm just going to, um, just to, let's get the, for now, we're going to get the table of contents out of the way. So I'm going to take, I'm going to go to table of contents, remove table of contents. Okay, so I'm going to include the um, Google logo. So I'm going to go to online pictures. 
and Google logo. Obviously, if, it, if I was with Google, I would have my own library where I have the logo, but I'm just, for ease of sake, we're going to, for ease, we're just going to go ahead and insert that. And I wanted to be the Google theme, so I have got a design tab, and I'm going to go ahead and change it. I have um, the Google, and in my class and during my live sessions, I ask the audience what theme, what brand this is. So I know that this is the Google brand. So I'm going to go ahead and choose those colors. And I want the Google fonts. Do I have any Google fonts? I mean, no. I'm just going to pick a particular um, Google font. That should be fine. That looks good. And what I want to do also, actually, I don't like those fonts. That looks fine. I want the title to be green, so I'm going to choose right click on title, modify, and because I'm using the Google colors, I have all the Google colors here. I want the level ones to be blue. And then I want level twos to be black. And then level threes to be red is good. Um, let's make this a little smaller. And we'll center that. Okay, so that's how I would make a branded document for the Google Employee Handbook. But I'd show you just how I did that. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye.